Hello, my name is Verle Haverhals, and I work for the University of Antwerp, Belgium. This ILSA project video will introduce you to interlingual respeaking and some of its challenges. We continue to build on what you have learned in the previous modules, that is, the modules on subtitling, on simultaneous interpreting, and on intralingual respeaking. So let's start by comparing intralingual respeaking with interlingual respeaking. Intralingual respeaking is a technique for live subtitling whereby the respeaker listens to live spoken input and simultaneously repeats it in the language of the speaker to a speech recognition software that turns the respoken text into written subtitles or written text. Interlingual respeaking is a technique for live subtitling whereby the respeaker listens to live spoken input and simultaneously translates it into another language while using the speech recognition software. So in interlingual respeaking you work from one language into another, live, much like a simultaneous interpreter does. Now that we know what interlingual respeaking is, the question is, what are the main challenges of interlingual respeaking? The first challenge is related to an important question for which you need an answer before you start. Have you been given a broadcast delay? You probably have heard about that in the previous modules, but let me explain again what it is. The broadcast delay is the additional time that the broadcaster is creating for live subtitling between the recording of a television program and the moment it is broadcast. This delay, often about one to five minutes, gives the respeaker the time to listen to the audio input and respeak it, translating the text and creating the subtitles required for the broadcast of the live program or live show. This delay also allows for teamwork involving a group of free speakers, translators and editors who can monitor and improve the final output, and in some cases an additional person who is then responsible for transmitting the result live on air. Unfortunately, a broadcast delay is not always granted. When you have such delay, we call the work semi-live, because you don't really produce the text in real time or live, even if the edit time can be minimal. If you have not been given any delay, you will in all likelihood be working alone or maybe in a team of two. If you work alone, you are also responsible for self-editing the text that you have respoken. This creates extra pressure for the person involved and additional time pressure because the respeaker has to make sure that the subtitle or live text appears on the screen as quickly as possible. A second challenge, as you probably have realized already, is multitasking. Not only do you have to listen closely to the audio, but you must also, of course, understand the speaker which is the same as intralingual respeaking, but on top of that, you have to translate what you have heard and understood while you are respeaking the passage that you, are, that you have translated before. So in interlingual, as opposed to intralingual respeaking, there is an additional process happening inside your head, comparable to simultaneous interpreting. Additionally, when the text appears on your computer, you might have to do the editing yourself, if you're working alone. A third challenge is a dictation of the translated text. Clear dictation might be more difficult in the case of interlingual respeaking, because of the mental capacity taken up by the translation process. You might be speaking more slowly, more quickly or differently because you are processing the translation in your head, while you are talking. The so-called buffering or storing of content will also create extra pressure, whereas dictation problems will often lead to more speech recognition software mistakes. In addition, you must create sentences that are well-structured from the start. 
due to the translation process, which can involve languages that are syntactically different, you cannot always just start to re-speak the sentence you heard, because the word order in the two languages may be different. You have to fully understand where the speaker is heading and understand the concepts he or she is discussing, as well as any implicit cultural references or connotations before you can start to re-speak. All of this is very similar to simultaneous interpreting. You will have to learn to take a little bit more distance from the source text than you would in intralingual re-speaking. In other words, you will have to learn to buffer more to store all this input in your memory so that you can re-speak it a little later while you continue to listen to the next sentence. The fourth challenge is that you have to transform an oral text or audio into a correctly written text. However, that is typical of both intralingual and interlingual re-speaking. So I'm not going to focus on that, since you have heard that already. The fifth challenge, which is specifically related to interlingual re-speaking, is the risk of losing some information because of the speed of the entire process and the usual translation or interpretation problems, such as not finding the correct word in the target language. You will also have to summarize even more compared to intralingual re-speaking to keep pace with the spoken input. Challenge number six is related to the software and devices that re-speakers have to use. Unfortunately, the perfect software for live interlingual re-speaking does not really exist yet, so sometimes you will encounter technical problems. However, there are also software-related problems or challenges that are more language-based, for example, homonyms and homophones, which can result in misrecognitions. That is the same in intralingual. On top of that, however, you must watch out for faux amis or false friends. Since you are translating live, you might stay too close to what you heard, translate it too literally, and thus make real content mistakes. Finally, last challenge, cultural aspects of the source text that might get lost in translation. If you are translating from English, for example, the speaker may be referring to measures or figures in a different metric system. Will you be able to interpret and reformulate those into the right amount in your own language in real time? And what about humor? Jokes and implicatures may also get lost, especially in live interlingual re-speaking, since you simply don't have the time to say everything. Even if you get the joke, will you be able to find a humorous alternative translation simultaneously? What if it is a pun and its keywords are repeated further on in the program? These challenges are, again, similar to those encountered by simultaneous interpreters. You will have understood that live interlingual speaking presents quite a few challenges. However, practice shows that it can be done and that you can learn how. So this is what we're going to do together in this module.